Hello, this is Georgios Christodoulou, and I'm going to present you some recent progress on the Nissan Ronet conjecture. This is joint work with Elias Kuchupias from the University of Oxford and Anna Maria Kovac from Frankfurt University. So, Nissan and Donner in the seminal paper, they originated the area of algorithmic mechanics design. This is an area that models computation when input is provided by selfish agents. And they posed two questions. The first question was, what are the computational limits of mechanism design, which is a very important branch of microeconomics and game theory? And the second question is, what can you achieve when you try to do optimization in such problems where input is provided by selfish agents? And they proposed the unrelated machine scheduling as a very important problem there to study and ask the question, what is the best approximation ratio that you can achieve in expand minimization for this problem? And related machine scheduling is important because it is a very well studied algorithmic problem with a lot of papers. So we have a lot of resources to take advantage when we want to create mechanisms. It captures very nicely multidimensional mechanism design, which is a very important and challenging aspect of mechanism design, as opposed to the single dimensional mechanism design, which we know more things. So uh, there are many important problems there that we know how to solve. It is also the inverse of additive combinatorial auctions, where combinatorial auction is a very important subject of mechanism design. So it captures also this aspect, which is very important in the inverse way, of course. And very importantly, it captures a different objective. It captures the min-max objective when we want to minimize the max span, where VCG doesn't work. So the main weapon that we have, the main arsenal that we have to attack such problems, which is the celebrated VCG mechanism doesn't work in this setting, so we need to come up with new mechanisms. So what is the Nissan Ronan model? So this is the, the standard unrelated machines problem, where there, there are n machines and them tasks. Each machine needs TIJ units of time in order to execute task J. And the goal is to minimize the maximum, to assign the tasks to the machine so that you minimize the maximum completion time. The challenge here in the Nissan Roland medal is that the machines are the players and the vector TI, the TIJs, are controlled by selfish agents, by the machines. So this is a private vector known only to player I. So and then we need to provide incentives to the players to report their true values because we assume that the machines are lazy and they want to minimize their completion time. So we need to provide them with incentives. So Nissan and Ronald suggested that we should use mechanism design to provide the incentives to the players to report their true values. So the players declare their values. The mechanism allocates the tasks using the allocation part of the mechanism, the allocation algorithm. It also pays the players based on the declared values in the allocation using the payment scheme. So a mechanism consists of these two parts, an allocation algorithm and the payment algorithm. And we assume that the players are utility maximizers, meaning, meaning that they want to maximize the payment minus the completion time. So I'm not going to give a more uh, accurate definition of truthfulness because we're not going to use it here, but we're going to use an equivalent definition, quick monotonicity. So this is a property that uh, depends only on the allocation function. So when you have two different inputs, which are different only on a single player, here this is player i, where the first input is t and the first input is t prime, they differ only on the declaration of, uh, of a single player, player i, then they must satisfy this nice monotonicity property on the allocation part. And we know that this is if and only if condition for uh, truthfulness. So if you satisfy this condition, then there are also appropriate payments that can make you truthful, although we're not going to use it here. But every truthful mechanism must satisfy this allocation property. The good thing with this property is that we can forget about the payments and focus only on the allocation part, the algorithmic part that we care to analyze. Let's see the geometric interpretation of quick monotonicity here for the case of two tasks. So we assume that we have fixed the values of all other players to S and we only care about the allocation of the player T. Here, uh, this player has two values, controls two values T1 and T2. And you can see the allocation by reporting different uh, pairs of these two values. 
So here, for example, if he reports small values, he gets both tasks. If he reports very high values, he doesn't get any of the tasks. So weak monotony is is telling us that uh, the allocation graph must look like uh, in these three different figures. So I'll, as the first one, which we call quasi-bundling, or the middle one, which we call quasi-flipping, or the third one, which we call task-independent. So it must be one of these three pictures. And of course, it may be the case that some of the areas are missing. So what is important for what follows is this boundary over here. This is the boundary C1 for getting task one, meaning that if player T reports anything smaller than C1, he gets task one. And if he reports anything higher than C1, he doesn't get his losing this task. Okay. Of course, as you can see in this figure, here he can only get task one or both tasks if he goes to the left of this boundary, but it definitely will get task one, and this is what is important. So the main question is, what is the optimal approximation ratio that you can achieve with truthful mechanisms for the scheduling problem? Truthful or weakly monotone mechanisms for this problem. So Nissan and Onan, they showed the lower bound of two and an upper bound of n in their seminal paper. So the upper bound was by applying the most well-known mechanism from mechanism design, which is the VCG mechanism. Unfortunately, it achieves a very poor ratio of n. And they showed a lower bound of two that there is no deterministic truthful mechanism that can achieve a better than two approximation ratio. And this is disregarding the computational aspects of the problem. So even in exponential time, you will not be able to achieve. So this is because of the limitations that weak monotonicity puts on the problem. And all the lower bounds that I'm going to discuss have this flavor. The further conjecture that there is no truthful mechanism with approximation ratio better than n, conjecturing that the tight answer is the upper bound. Then the lower bound was slightly improved to 2.41 after some years, and then to 2.61. And uh, people also studied restricted domains. For example, for the case of only two values, there was an upper bound of two, a constant upper bound. They also studied restricted mechanisms. So here, uh, the first two are a bit technical uh, to define here. But uh, the last restriction is quite natural. It assumes anonymity where the identity of the player shouldn't play any role. So these are the so-called symmetric mechanisms. And the conjecture was proved for these cases. And uh, we we'll also studied more general domains. So, for example, in our previous work, we showed with Elias and Anna Maria an upper, uh, a lower bound of square root of n, border square root of n, but for some modular costs, not for additive costs. And on the same year, uh, there was some uh, progress on uh, the Nissan Ronin conjecture. The lower bound was further improved, and uh, the best lower bound previous to this work was 3 to 2 Dobson sketch all okay. So in this work, we show a lower bound of 1 plus square root of n minus 1. Now we move to the main result. We show the lower bound of uh, square root of n roughly for uh, all deterministic truthful mechanisms. And uh, the key ingredients of our proof is a 2 by 2 characterization of truthful mechanisms. The instances that we consider that we call them graph inputs. The induction that we use in order to build uh, the construction. And also, we use some probabilistic arguments to show existence of this uh, bad distance that achieves the lower bound of uh, square root of n. First, we move to the characterization. I'm going to give you the basic idea of the characterization. So, this is based on previous work with Elias and Ana Maria. This is a two by two instance. You have the T player and the S player, only two players, two tasks. And we showed that. All the possible mechanisms for this case are uh, either affi minimizers, which I'm not going to give a definition, but uh, I only care about the single dimensional boundaries, the boundary functions, which are linear in S1 in that case. There can be a task independent mechanisms, where in this case, uh, the allocation figure looks like this, but the important aspect also is that this, is, this may be non-linear in S1, which makes things more difficult. Relaxed affine minimizers, which is a very challenging case because C1 now is linear for large values of S1, but can be non-linear for small values of S1, which makes it uh, even more challenging. One-dimensional, they are very easy to handle, and dictatorship, which is also very easy to handle. So next we move to the special inputs that we consider, which we call graph inputs. 
Now we're given a graph and then edge corresponds to a task, a vertex to a machine, and we need to assign its task. This means to orient the edges. So a special uh, primitive instance, would say is a star instance that we need to understand. We have a root player which has values t1 through tn for all the tasks. And now its task can only be assigned to the t player or to a leaf player, to an s player, which we call there. The question is, what is the worst case approximation ratio for stars? This will be very useful for our construction. And the reason is the following, because consider the value of alpha to be one over square root of n. And uh, now suppose that the t player has alpha all the way. If the t player takes all tasks, then the approximation ratio is uh, n times alpha, which is square root of n, because the optimum allocation would give the task to the s players with a value of 1. We call them good tasks, and this will appear later in the proof. The other extreme case in a, in a graph in a star instance would be when a single task goes to an s player, like that, when the optimum on all the other tasks is 0. You have a 0 to every other column. So in this case, if you assign the task to the S player, then you get the cost of 1, while the optimal thing would be to give the task to the T player with uh, approximation ratio of 1 over alpha, which is again square root of n. We call them good tasks, and this is a bad task. So what is the best mechanism for a star? Unfortunately, there is a constant approximation mechanism for stars, so we cannot prove this square root of n. So therefore, we need to hide this star to a bigger graph. And we do this using a multi-star, as we call it. So a multi-star with n clusters, and for each cluster we have L tasks for some large value of L, which is exponential the number of the players. And we have n plus 1 players, player 0 or the root player or the T player, that can take all tasks, and player I. So each task can be assigned only to player 0 or to player I. So now, the ultimate goal is to show that in this huge multi-star, there exists a star with very high ratio. And we build this star carefully, this instance carefully, using induction. So first, let me start with what we call a standard instance. So an instance is standard for a subset of clusters here, C1 and C2. If the values of the T player are very small, beta, very close to 0, and uh, a size R1. A size would be, most of the case would be 1 in all the instances that I'm going to consider. Okay. And the values of the third cluster of all the other clusters who had more clusters would be trivial, meaning that the optimum on these would be bounded by 2 times delta, where delta is 1 over n squared. So something like this. So a set of good tasks here, tasks P1 and P2, are good, we say that P1 and P2 are good, if standard for C1 and C2, C3 is trivial, as it was before, and uh, roughly, if we set the values of alpha for these two tasks, for the T player, then this player must get both tasks. For technical reasons, uh, alpha here is a ball close to 1 over square root of n, not just a single point. Okay, so in, in this case, the T player must get both tasks. So this reminds us the definition of a good set of the bad instance that we had in mind when we were considering a single star. So the high level idea is that we're going to show that there always exists a good set of P1 to Pn. This means that one task for each cluster. And in this case, we would achieve the approximation ratio of uh, square root of n. Okay, so it looks like one. Or there is a single bad task, which was the other extreme case that we discussed earlier, the, where we again achieve a, a, a lower bound of square root of n. Or the approximation ratio is even higher, which I'm not going to consider here, but this helps us to eliminate some other cases, some other corner cases. Okay, so let's assume that this is not the case or this is not the case. So the induction will help us to build carefully this set of good tasks, as we call them. Okay. So in order to do that, we generalize the definition, we extend the definition to potentially good sets, as we call, which has the property that all subsets of these tasks must be good. So here, for example, P2 and P3 are good. Okay. Uh, so if you set the values 
to alpha and alpha to p2 and p3 it gets both tasks similarly for every subset of these tasks p1 and p3 or p1 and p2 okay the actual definition is uh, is much more involved for technical reasons now we need to show that there always exists a, a good set of n tasks and we do this using probabilistic arguments so the proof at high level looks as follows so we show that there always exists a good set of n tasks, one for each cluster, or otherwise the approximation ratio is high. We show by induction on k that there are many potentially good sets, pk, okay, from and given a potentially good set pk, we show that other pk is good, or most extensions of pk are good. And by extensions we mean when we exchange the last task pk with some other task of the cluster that we call siblings. So recall that for each cluster we have lots of tasks. So for task for the cluster k now we exchange pk with some other pk prime, then this will be good. If pk is not good, then there are many extensions of pk which are good. Okay, and I'm going to give you a glimpse of how we do this last part. Okay, so now take a potentially good set. It can be that this set is good, meaning that uh, if you set the t values at alpha for these tasks, all the tasks are given to the t player, which is good for us. Or the other case is that uh, this is totally bad. This means that all these tasks are given to the s player. Okay, so there is nothing in the middle, and this is because of our inductive construction, if you think about the definition of potentially goodness. But now this case is. Uh, Relatively easy to handle for the following reason, because now we can focus on a sibling. We take a random sibling pk prime, the cluster k, and for the pk pk prime slice, which is the mechanism if one focuses on these two tasks only, for these two tasks we have only two players involved, player 0 and player k, and therefore we can apply our 2 by 2 characterization. So therefore, we know that this can be either an affine minimizer, relaxed affine minimizer, task independent, or one dimensional, all these cases that we figured out. So it must be one of these cases. Okay, And therefore, we take one of them, uh, each of them separately, we analyze them, and we show that practically there are no affine minimizers, that there are few relaxed affine minimizers. If there are any, there must be few. We eliminate completely one-dimensional constant mechanisms because of the approximation. And therefore, we conclude that it must be a task-independent mechanism. So with high probability, if you take a random sibling, this mechanism must be a task-independent mechanism. And what is good with the task-independent mechanism is that we can show now that even the original potentially good set was not good, that many extensions now are good. So this extension is a good extension. So just to give you an idea of what we exploit in the case where pk and pk prime are task independent, it allows us to swap the t values of pk and pk prime and extend this set to a good set. So when we make this change, because pk and pk prime are task independent, the boundary points do not change. So we exploit the fact that potentially goodness is telling us that there exists such a diagonal. And this allows us to extend this set to a good set. So to conclude, we provided a lower bound of 1 plus square root of n minus 1 for deterministic mechanisms. There are many open problems. The most important one is actually, can one fully resolve the conjecture showing a lower bound of n, if this is the case. Uh, our approach uh, is tied for multistars, meaning that the, actually there exists a mechanism that achieves exactly this ratio of 1 plus square root of n minus 1. So this means that one must resolve to different constructions. Uh, for randomized or fractional mechanisms, uh, is there a lower bound? Uh, not much is known in this case. We believe that for universally truthful, one could use similar ideas to show a non-constant lower bound. But for uh, truthful expectation and fractional mechanism, there is a bottleneck that there is no good 2 by 2 characterization that one can use. So this is pretty open. This is a fascinating problem. And also, uh, graph scheduling, we think that is a problem that uh, deserves attention on its own. It's a good test bed for new mechanisms. And we also think that uh, understanding graph instances 
may be useful for uh, resolving the conjecture. Thank you very much, and I hope that you will enjoy also Ana Maria's live talk.